Hello everybody, now we have a, a presentation about async test, how to, to have easier unique testing for async IO code. Hi, hi everybody. Um, my name is Martin. I'm, uh, I used to be a system and network engineer working on a HTTP reverse proxy written uh, uh, with AsyncIO. And uh, during that time, I had uh, a lot of trouble trying to uh, write unit tests which were working correctly. So I decided to uh, to write a small library called async test, which is um, which provides a few features that you might find useful if you. Uh, ever uh, happen in, to be in the same condition. So um, during this presentation, I will uh, present you the main features of async test. Um, I will assume that you know what a unit test is, I hope, at least. And uh, unfortunately, I won't have the time to uh, explain stuff about async IO. So if you are really not into um, what's a coroutine, what's a task, how, to, uh, how an event loop is working, you might be a bit lost, and I'm sorry for that. So I uh, will talk about um, what I made to enhance the unit test package, uh, standard package from uh, Python. Uh, most of what you will see is basically uh, built on top of unit test. So it's like a drop-in replacement. You can use async test instead of unit test, and it will work as expected. Uh, I will uh, show you how I uh, implemented uh, transparent mocking of uh, coroutine functions, which is uh, probably the most uh, useful feature of async test and I will uh, show you a few advanced features that might be also interesting. So let's start with uh, a presentation of a test case. So um, as I said async test case is uh, built on top, of, on top of unit test test case so it's just a class that extends uh, the unit test version and um, its main feature is that it handles the loop creation and um, termination for you for each of your tests. So every time a test case is instantiated and start to, to run, a new event loop from AsyncIO is uh, started and running so you are sure that your test is running in uh, an isolated environment, so to speak. Um, obviously, inside of your code, you can access uh, uh, the instance of the loop just uh, by uh, using self.loop. So um, here is a simple example of uh, test case. And uh, what we can see here it's, uh, is that I can actually use a coroutine function to, uh, as a setup function, or uh, it works with teardown, or even your test case can be a coroutine. So you don't have to um, uh, manually declare your coroutine uh, function, then uh, schedule it on the loop by yourself. It's all done for you, so uh, you just have to f focus on writing your actual test, and uh, don't bother with uh, the scheduling and uh, stuff like that. Uh, it also works uh, for cleanup functions, so basically everywhere you expect to be able to use a coroutine uh, with, in a test case, it will work. Um, just a quick advice regarding that. Um, since it's uh, fully compatible with unit test, uh, setup and teardown can be actual functions, but I suggest that you always use coroutines because it will be way easier and you won't have to remember if you need to uh, await your parent setup or stuff like that. So always stick to coroutines. Uh, be aware also that it works for, uh, the, the loop is created for the instance of the test case. So it won't work if you want to use a coroutine in setup class or setup module or those kind of functions. And uh, someone opened a ticket to uh, add this feature and I decided to reject it because I feel like if you try to do that, you will probably uh, break the single most important thing with test, which is try to keep the isolation as best as possible. So, um, however, if you really, really want to break this simple assumption, you can still do it. Uh, here, what I do is that I'm in a situation when, uh, where I need to use my customized version of an event loop. So, uh, for instance, here with a setup class, I define it, and um, I can ask 
the test case to use the default loop. So in that case, rather than creating a new loop before the test, it would just uh, call asyncio.getEventLoop and return the um, event loop uh, that you set right before. Um, one and the feature of test case is that it has some um, some fail-safe for you, uh, like this example, which was uh, very common at first when uh, people were using Python 3.4, uh, yeah, without uh, the uh, async def syntax. You were using um, actual um, generators as coroutines. And in that case, you have the feeling that your test is okay and uh, you won't see any failure in the result of your test while actually it didn't run uh, at all, because what it did here is that it saw a function that is prefixed by test underscore, so it will uh, call it, it will uh, return a generator instance, and will never run. So um, basically, you won't see that your test is actually not running, and that's because you forgot to add the decorator asyncio.coroutine, which marks effectively this uh, generator function as a coroutine. So what I did in that case is that I, I did a default check that if the loop did not run uh, during the test, uh, the test will fail. So you will know that you made a mistake. Um, if in some case you actually don't want to use a coroutine and be sure that the loop did and don't want to check uh, that the loop did not run, uh, I've got this decorator called fail on, which has a few uh, parameters that allows you to enable some of the checks and disable some others. We will see some of them uh, later. So, uh, one nice feature that been uh, added a few months ago is a clocked test case. Because what we want to do is uh, schedule stuff that will run probably in a couple of seconds or later. Uh, writing tests that will have to wait until uh, the clock moves forward can take a lot of time, uh, just wasted time. So um, clock test case helps you to control the, the time of the loop. We so uh, in this example, for instance, um, let's say that I've got a class which downloads a resource and will refresh it every five seconds. So here what I've got is uh, that I set up my uh, refresh and uh, see that I've, uh, my uh, downloader has never been called. Then I call uh, self-advance, which will uh, move the clock forward for five seconds. And uh, as you can see, also, I can do it with uh, 10 seconds there. And what is interesting is that I actually had three, uh, two calls during the await. So what it means is that the clock will not jump to the 10 more seconds, but will actually execute the seconds of uh, callbacks and coroutine you expect. So it will work as well as if the clock was working and not like uh, stuttering or moving fast and break. Um, if we just moved forward the time to 10 seconds, uh, we will only have one call and one and basically the call the set for um, five seconds would be late and the uh, one scheduled for 10 seconds would not be scheduled at all. So um, in that case, you might want to uh, answer that if you set um, uh, schedule a callback for later, you want to be sure that it has been executed before the end of your test. We can check that with uh, um, optional test called active handles that you can also uh, um, enable with the fail on decorator. Uh, in this example, I use the decorator on the world class, so it will apply on all tests, obviously. And uh, the yes, the example in the bottom shows that I also handle the case where you cancel the handle and the callback. So now, um, more interesting probably is mocking. So I will show you a quick example. This example basically um, get uh, post URL from uh, an URL. And uh, I open a connection to the server, then I get, I write a HTTP request, then read the headers, and uh, read the payload according to the size I got in the header. So it's a bit dumb, but uh, it's for the example. So here, obviously, what I don't want to do is to open an actual connection to a server in my test, so I want to uh, mock that. So. Um, here, what I do is that I will uh, I define the function called create mocks. So I just uh, will mock my stream reader and stream writer. 
uh, which are the two uh, objects returned by my open connection uh, coating. Uh, as you can see, you can specify the spec uh, as you would do with unit test, and in that case, um, the mock object would be smart enough to detect that one of the attributes uh, that you are accessing is actually a coroutine function and not a plane function, so it will uh, work correctly. So here, for instance, I just uh, specify a few um, that what I expect to get as a result of my read and read until calls that were in my uh, example here. So, um, as I said, it used the spec of uh, the, the the object you you want to mock, so it uh, detects coroutine and it's fine. Coroutines are functions are actually mocked using uh, an object a class called coroutine mock, which uh, basically uh, will work correctly if you uh, try is an instance of a coroutine or uh, use the helpers function is coroutine, or also with the inspect module, so it will actually work almost as expected all the time. Uh, however, one uh, drawback is that uh, uh, kind of an anti-pattern I see with async IO is uh, people actually uh, saying that they are providing a coating in their um, API, while it's actually just a function returning a future, so it works exactly the same way in your code, but actually the function is not a coating, and uh, when you will uh, want to mock it, you will expect it to work uh, as smoothly as in the example I showed, while actually it will not work. And uh, one famous example is with AUHTTP, which does that a lot, or used to do that a lot, and um, made uh, the mocking quite hard. So, uh, now that I know how I can create my mocks, what I do here is that I want to use them. So, I use the feature of unit test called patch. Patch is basically, uh, will temporarily replace the symbol you want to use by a mock. Uh, here, we've got open connection, which will be replaced by a mock, which uh, will return as a result, the result of uh, my previously uh, defined function create mocks. And um, in that case, what you have seen with the decorator is roughly the same as this example using the with statement. And uh, what is important to see here is that the patch will still be active even if uh, the coating uh, yields to the scheduler, which means that uh, basically, the patch will stay enabled even if you go out of the coroutine and will affect other tax, tasks uh, running concurrently. In some cases, uh, you don't want to have that. And uh, you can, uh, it, so I, I, I did a feature that is uh, an attribute to the patch used as a decorator. It won't work with uh, the with statement, but it works with the decorator. And here, uh, I specify the scope of my patch to limited, limited to the coroutine, and uh, when the coroutine will yield and stop running, the patch will be disabled and re-enabled again, right uh, when the scheduler and the loop uh, will decide to uh, run the coroutine again. Okay, so um, one, last, uh, one last feature, which is uh, selector mocking. Uh, this is probably a feature you will never use because uh, it uh, targets the lowest uh, level of async I.O. Uh, the idea is that in some cases you will want to handle low level objects like sockets, file, file descriptors, whatever, and uh, you will want to see uh, if you can, uh, if everything is working as expected, like you will get an event from the selector from the event loop. And uh, so basically it's something you will use if you, for instance, want to add a new protocol or a new uh, transport to the async IO library. Or if, for instance, you are uh, trying to uh, use Twisted on top of async IO. Uh, so in this example, which is actually a really dumb example, but uh, what I do is that I don't want to open a real socket, so I just use socket mock instead. And I can... Um, uh, schedule an, um, a callback to the event, uh, something is ready to be read on the socket. And uh, I've got an helper provided by AsyncTest which allows me to trigger the actual event. So I can manually define that 
I want to simulate a kernel event saying I can read or write on my uh, file descriptor. So, um, Test, uh, the sockets mock, uh, socket mock works because uh, I defined a, something called test selector, which is basically a wrap around the original selector. And uh, what it's, uh, it's pretty useful because uh, it works with the mock, um, the mock file descriptors, but also with actual uh, file descriptors. So you can use it uh, as your main selector for your event loop without having to care if uh, how your tests will run. Uh, I provide a few uh, different mocks, uh, file mock, SSL socket mock, and all of them are basically just uh, mocks compatible with test selector and uh, providing a file no um, function which returns a fake uh, file descriptor, so a fake integer. And uh, they just use the spec of the objects defined by uh, Python. So since it works correctly, um, if you since it works correctly, if you happen to use um, mock uh, files or actual file descriptors, uh, I decided to enable it in it by default in the test case, and uh, basically it's already available if you use the test case class I presented you uh, before. So one last trick is if you want to be sure that you started to, you have one call to remove reader after you set a callback with add reader or the converse add writer and remove writer. Uh, you can enable this uh, check. We will uh, ensure that everything is cleaned when your test finishes. And uh, this is very important because uh, you might have a lot of bizarre side effects if you happen to close a file without removing the um, reader and the writer callbacks. Uh, since uh, they will be defined even if the um, new file a new file descriptor is uh, uh, using the same value as a file previously closed. So, um, just to wrap up, um, in the future I would like to add the support of asynchronous iterators and, asyn and uh, context managers. This is a feature that is uh, more and more uh, asked because uh, some libraries like uh, IOHTTP are using um, asynchronous uh, context manager a lot. Um, I would like to add features to uh, my uh, file mocks, for instance, being able to specify uh, a given buffer and let the user choose how we will consume this buffer, so to simulate an actual, um, what, what you would expect when you mock uh, events running on the, the network. And, uh, well, I won't do that, actually, but if someone wants to uh, work on uh, proactor support, which is uh, targeting Windows, uh, feel free to open a pull request. And uh, for people who are actually uh, using currently PyTest AsyncIO, which is a uh, plugin to PyTest, uh, you can use AsyncTest with it, uh, especially for mocks. That will be uh, really useful and uh, uh, saves you a lot of time. And to finish, async test is actually used by people in production, well, to test their production code. Some of them are uh, working at Cisco and Mozilla, and uh, obviously my uh, previous company, the company where I started this project, always that I use it a lot for all its tests. So thank you very much for your attention. Um, you can have uh, you can read the docs and uh, check the code on uh, GitHub and uh, feel free to ask me questions or suggest some features or find bugs and whatever on uh, async test. Uh, I would be glad to uh, to try to help you. Thank you. Okay, so I've got time for questions if anyone wants to ask. Yep. between original unit test and a signal test? You made it. 
So the question was, what's the actual difference in terms of speed when uh, running with async test rather than unit test? Uh, obviously, async test is really slower than unit test because for each test that you start, you will create a new loop and so uh, open a lot of um, low-level kernel um, objects like uh, the selector object and stuff like that. So it's quite slow, quite slower than unit test. So if you if you don't target, uh, if you, what you want to do is not uh, running coroutines, you probably don't need to use async test and should stick to unit test, yes. Oh, and also you can uh, mix unit test, dot test case, and async test, dot test case anytime you want because uh, it will always be uh, detected by the unit test runner. So that's working. Yep. Uh, Well, then related to that, can you actually uh, reuse an event loop from another test when you know there is not going to be, sorry, there won't going to be any side effect by reusing, reusing it? So the question was about um, reusing the same loop uh, between several tests. Is that correct? Yeah. So. Um, you can improve p speed by doing that, uh, it's all right, but the issue will be that if you happen to have some events that are still, um, uh, that were not uh, executed, or you, the, the loop will be in a state that is modified uh, if several tests are running and using the same loop. So, uh, for instance, if you happen to use clock test case and uh, use the same loop for each test, you will uh, most of the time have uh, a non-predictable um, start time at the beginning of your test. Using clock test case, for instance, the first test that runs, if you call self.loop.time, you will get time of zero because it's the beginning of the test. So if you use the same loop and several tests, uh, the next test will have the value that is left by the previous test. So you can speed up by using the same loop, but in most of the time when you write tests, you don't want to have tests that are sat fast because it's not your main um, concern. You're more concerned by uh, consistency and the uh, actual work of your loop. Yeah, when you know that it's not going to have side effects, you can't do it because it's, uh, there is that feature that allows you to do it. So, uh, any more questions? Okay, so I think I'm done. Thanks.